welcome to KU's Summer Community Webinar Series. I'm joined by Dr. Pierre. We're going to be talking about COVID-19. And I think the place to start is possibly the most important question. How does the virus get transmitted? Well, the virus gets transmitted in the air. Okay. Um, that's, the, that's the thing that WHO took a long time to realize. And that's why we have been suffering tremendously from this virus. So initially, people thought that um, it, it gets transmitted like the flu, mm -hmm. uh, usually by touch. And then you touch your face and your eyes and your nose. Um, and you get, uh, you get uh, the virus particles through the fomites, what we call them. These are deposits. Uh, but it turns because out... Because it's on a surface. Yes, on the right, surface. Yeah. So then they transfer to your hands. Exactly, yeah. that's, the, that's the idea. But then as we learn more about this virus, uh, we realize uh, more and more that it's actually transmitted in the air. Okay. Um, and it doesn't need to have you know, somebody speak to your face, but it lingers in the air. And, and that's the difficulty uh, in actually controlling this virus. So it's, it's, an, it's a transmitted in the air. Okay, and there was quite a lot of talk before about droplets and how if you had a certain distance from each other, the droplets would just fall. Is that accurate? Or? Well, that's, um, that's exactly, you know, they're, do they're doing the same thing with the flu virus. The flu okay. virus, you get it through droplets. Right. And then these big droplets, they don't travel uh, in the air as much. However, with COVID-19 or SARS-CoV-2, uh, the particles actually linger in the air for a lot longer and they don't need to be big or large so they can travel uh, distances. That's why we keep saying to people um, stay away at least two meters but also avoid closed spaces because in you know elevators and, and, and small cabins uh, the, the virus lingers a lot uh, you know a lot in the air and you can actually inhale it. And hence the importance of a face mask then? Absolutely so that's why face masks is, is really important and it's absolutely necessary to actually really stop the spread of this virus. Uh, it's an essential component. And if the virus is kind of hanging around in the air, does that mean that it does the same thing if you're outside? Surely it just dissipates a lot easier? Absolutely, because it hangs in the air. Uh, when you're outside, you know, it gets diluted very quickly yeah. and then there's no problem. So usually infections do not happen outside unless you are face to face with the individual jogging or, or, yeah. or doing excessive sports and, and, and this person actually breathes into, into your face. Mm -hmm. uh, other than that, it's very, very rare that you get um, a virus uh, transmitted outside. So that's why it's important when we are indoors to open even slightly the window or the door just a slight opening actually will, will, will bring in uh, fresh air from the mm -hmm. outside um, and then it will dilute the virus very quickly. Of course, we're still recommending wearing face masks outside Absolutely. as well. Well, um, if, if, you're, if you're surrounded with people, uh, wear it outside, mm -hmm. absolutely. Uh, but I think uh, that as we progress with this pandemic and as we know more about the virus, I think uh, less restrictions will be made on face masks outside uh, there still be you know certain places where you have to wear a mask outside um, as we learn more so maybe maybe less restrictions in the future for outside masks and if you've got COVID-19 are you always infectious you get it and you can straight away transmit it or does it take a little time well uh, when you get COVID-19 or SARS-CoV-2 uh, virus uh, when you get infected or get exposed to it and it enters your body it usually takes anywhere between 18 to 36 hours for you to be able to transmit the virus to others. So there is this period where the virus is not yet infectious inside the body. It takes a while for it to be infectious. And, and, and we are mostly infectious, um, probably, not probably, we are mostly infectious uh, around two days prior to the, uh, the first sign of symptoms. We are highly infectious. Um, so uh, asymptomatic when we right. are pre-symptomatic to be exact, we are highly infectious because we don't know we're infected. Mm -hmm. um, the people around us don't know we are infected and we are harboring high quantities or high loads of the virus. And that's where we transmit the virus the most. So it's what we call day minus two and day minus one are the most crucial um, mm -hmm. uh, days that we should really be pay attention to. So it's important to get a fast result then? Absolutely. That's why sometimes PCR may, you know, may not be always efficient oh, okay. because, because sometimes by the time you get the results, uh, it takes sometimes 24 hours, you know, when it's, you know, when there are too many people taking the tests yeah. in certain places, it even takes longer. And the longer it takes, the more dangerous uh, things become. Yeah. So, so that's why it's very crucial to get a quick result and 
sometimes, um, you know, why not try the antigen test, okay. which is something that we have not been talking about much mm -hmm. in the media. Because the PCR is fairly effective, right? But Absolutely. it's the speed of it that's the problem. Well, it's the speed of it. And also, sometimes you are positive but not infectious. And that's also people don't understand that. Yeah, how does that work? So you, you are infectious um, at the early stages of the disease. Yeah. Uh, but the virus lingers in the body. And sometimes the RNA lingers in the body as particles and not infectious particles. So right. you can test positive after you've you've had the virus and, and you, you are symptom free and you are infectious free, but you still test positive. So you're no longer PCR. a dangerous Absolutely. danger for spreading it, but Absolutely. you still actually have it. Absolutely. But the antigen, it's only positive when you are infec infectious. Oh, so there's a difference then between the antigens and the antibody, because yes. we heard a bit well, about yeah. that where you take the antibody test and it can tell yeah. you if you've had it. Well, um, antibody testing is not useful is not as useful for us as we as we try to really clear this yeah. pandemic. I think antigen, antigen testing is much more effective because you want to catch people when they are contagious mm -hmm. and you want to catch them fast. So a good antigen test will take 15 minutes and then it's very quick wow. um, and then you basically uh, you can detect when the virus is mm -hmm. highly highly infectious. Um, now uh, after you've had the virus for a couple of days it will you know, the, the antigen test will, will turn negative, but the PCR will be positive. But I care about when the virus is, is, is contagious, and that's why antigen test is very important as well. And how do you do an antigen test? Oh, you just, just like the nasal swab. Exactly, exactly the same. Exactly, exactly. It's like in the nasal swab. Yeah, unlike, antigen, un, unlike antibody tests, where you have to have a blood test um, to check for antibodies if you have been exposed to the virus. So, the next step is, you know, once we've got antigen testing underway and we're catching people when they're the most um, transmissible, to say, the next step would surely be the vaccines. And I feel like that's something that we really need to talk about in terms of efficacy. How effective are vaccines against the COVID virus? Well, uh, vaccines, we have so many of them now and they're effective. They're mm -hmm. effective to a certain extent. Um, uh, you know, some vaccines, when we say effective, what do we mean by effective? Mm -hmm. I think we should worry about uh, two things when we give vaccines. First, um, is it going to protect people from dying and from yeah. getting severe disease? And most vaccines actually have done so good with that. So we have a range from 80 to 95 percent. Um, and clearly, uh, we have seen this. I mean, we are seeing that people are dying less of the, of the COVID who are vaccinated. So that's a very important step. Um, but then the second question is, how effective are they in transmitting the disease? And that's something that we have not really understood very clearly. It takes time. But we know, we know for a fact that you can be vaccinated and still catch the virus and yeah. transmit the virus, albeit to a lower level. Uh, and, and, and there's a variation among vaccines. So some people say that certain vaccines are very effective mm -hmm. in even lowering the transmission and uh, the um, infection rate. Uh, some other vaccines are not as efficient at lowering the infection rate and also lowering the transmission right. of, uh, from person to person. Uh, but overall, overall, vaccines have been extremely effective, all of them, against severe disease and against um, uh, mortality with COVID-19. So just to clarify, that means that if you've had a vaccine and then you catch COVID, if you then transmit it to someone else, they're going to get a lower version of it, it's not going to be as serious, or are yeah. you just less likely to transmit it? Exactly, you are less likely to transmit it, and if a person is infected, mm -hmm. he or she is less likely to get infected with it. Right. So that's, that's important. Okay. So if they're vaccinated, they're less yes. likely to get infected yes. with it. Okay. The other thing we have to mention is there are there's been quite a lot of fear mongering about side effects and things like that. Are there any side effects to worry about from the vaccine? Well, in any vaccine there are side effects, but the way to think about this pandemic, uh, first it's a pandemic. I mean, we cannot control it without vaccines, so it's not a choice that we have in that. The second thing about vaccines is you you look at the benefit to risk ratio, mm -hmm. and and it's very clear, extremely clear that the benefit way, way outweighs the risk by, by a million, by a, literally a million. Wow. So, uh, so yes, there are, there are complications that happen. We don't know why they happen. Mm -hmm. uh, like in any, in any drug we take, you know, anything we take, there's always a risk. Uh, but the risk is very, very, very minimal. 
So I, I wouldn't worry about the side effects of any vaccines, um, that, of any of those vaccines that, that have been approved by WHO so far. That's good to hear, and especially since there are different kinds of vaccines as well. All vaccines, all vaccines that have been reported to us, all vaccines that have been in common use now, and WHO has actually uh, put them on their list of safe vaccines to take. They are very safe. Uh, the side effects are extremely minimal, as I said, and the, the benefit to risk ratio is, is huge. So there's no point in worrying about the side effects of these vaccines. Does it matter what kind of vaccine you get? There's the attenuated version, then there's the new mRNA one, right? Well, there's no attenuated version so far. There, okay. is, there is the killed vaccine. The Sinopharm is a killed virus, sorry. Right. Um, and there are uh, other uh, vaccines that actually are vector-based. Okay. Um, so you get a portion of the virus in, but once once it's inside you, it's not replicating. So it's not gonna, uh, you know, it's not gonna replicate. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna, it's not gonna do anything. And the third type are the mRNA vaccine, and it's a, it's a, it's a small portion of the virus itself, very small portion. Mm -hmm. And once it's inside the cell, in a few hours, it's gone. Uh, so there's no point in worrying about really getting infected from a a, a vaccine. Uh, because they're either dead virus or a small fraction of the virus that will be actually destroyed by the cell mm -hmm. in a few hours. And the whole point of those small portions of the virus is to teach the body to react to it when they come into well, contact? It, it's, it's to teach the body or is to, to actually pr um, prime the body to say, okay, here's the antigen, here's the, the virus look, look alike and fight it and then uh, to, to, to mount what we call a quick immune response okay. because if you are exposed to the virus or to the antigen or to the surface of the virus before, just like a vaccine, then your immune system will, will kick in very quickly and will fight off the virus very quickly and that's what we want. Mm -hmm. And these vaccines, are they going to require booster shots? Okay, the booster shot we still don't know. I, I, there are uh, there are many studies underway. I think it's too soon. Yeah. Uh, I don't think we can say uh, it's like the flu, it's not like the flu. We have been saying this forever and we've been telling people it's not the flu. Yeah. The flu is a very different beast. Um, the flu requires uh, a booster shot because, because the way of the virus is. Uh, this virus, um, you know, from, from a, a genetics perspective, we do not expect uh, that we would require um, a booster shot unless there is a huge change in, in its antigenicity. In other words, in its capacity to create a new form of, of disease. Um, and, and that's why uh, we may need a booster shot. Uh, the answer is not there yet. We don't know really if we're gonna need a booster shot. Uh, some people claim a booster shot is effective. Uh, I've yet to see the evidence. Um, I think um, in six months we'll know more. Okay. With the vaccines in hand, and if we can get to a level of herd immunity and keep everybody safe, does that mean we'll finally be able to control the spread and actually control this virus that's taken over our lives? Well, uh, controlling the virus requires many, many steps. Mm -hmm. A vaccine is one of them. And the effect of vaccine, what people don't realize, it's like there is a multiplicative effect of the, of the, of the vaccine. N not the vaccine itself, but the way the way the population behaves right. when it's vaccinated. In other words, so it will be very difficult to infect people who are vaccinated. Mm -hmm. And so the virus will have to really work a, a lot more to be able to, to spread as much. So vaccine is one way to lower the percentage of people that are infected. And as we lower those, the, the effect is multiplicative. So, so the, the effect is gonna be very large. So that's one. Uh, second, if we keep on wearing the masks, and if we keep on, on really maintaining uh, the social behavior that we've learned to maintain over the last um, year or so, I think this will be tremendous as well. Um, so the, the, the problem that we are faced right now with what happened, for example, in India and what will happen probably in South Africa right now, is that when the virus is, is free to infect people, um, when you have so many people infected, the virus is actually multiplicating or replicating in a very uh, speedy way. Right. And that's the danger, because when, when the virus does this, then you have new strains will arise. And that's where the mutations come from. Exactly, out. so that's why, you know, the sooner we vaccinate, the faster we vaccinate, and the more rigorous of implementation we have in place where the vaccine is spreading very fast, mm -hmm. um, that's where we can actually curb 
uh, the virus. So the goal is really to control the multiplicative effect or the multiplication of the virus and the fast multiplication of the virus. We want to stay away from new variants. We don't want to really have you know, other variants in the Delta and hopefully this will be the last variant that we have to deal with. Does that mean if, say it did mutate again, would we need different vaccines to deal with those? Yes. Right. So it, if it mutates again and if it changes the, um, the, um, the structure, outer structure of the virus, because mm -hmm. that's what the immune, uh, you know, our immune uh, system recognizes, it recognizes right. the outer structure of the virus. So if mutations happen in the outer structure of the virus, you know, if we have vaccinate, if, if we vaccinate people against a certain structure that we have learned about, now it's a new structure and we have to teach the, the immune system, um, you know, from scratch. And that's why we will need another booster shot, as I said, or another vaccine altogether. So the takeaway message is get your vaccine, continue to wear your mask, continue to implement all the social distancing measures that are helping to keep us safe. Absolutely, absolutely. Dr. Pierre, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.